I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never, never Good morning, good morning. Amen. This is Upon This Rock Ministry coming to you from the Church of God of Chesapeake, Virginia. Good morning, everybody out there. Amen. Happy Thursday. The week is almost over, especially the work week for those of us who work. Well, I thank God for his goodness this morning. Thank God for yet being saved at in the land of the living. And I thank God that I'm able to assemble with this wonderful group of supporters that support this broadcast every morning. We thank God for that. Amen. For assembling here. And so today um, we got some good things. Yesterday we had a little bit of technical difficulty. But I think I worked those things out. And so... Uh, our devotion may be cut short a little bit so we can kind of go back and replay some of those an animations. So at this time, let us continue in songs. God bless you.
Well, I'm going to continue it, so let us see what we got going. Maybe. Just bear with me a little bit while we correct this matter. days where the animation, not the animation, but the songs don't want to play. All right. Let us try this one. I don't possess houses or lands. Fine clothes or jewelry, sorrows and cares in this old world, my lot seems to be. Christ is 
should be. Christ is all, all in all, this world to me. Amen. That song said, Christ is all. He's everything to me. Again, good morning. Amen. I'm Pastor Rick, and this broadcast upon this rock ministry is coming to you from the Church of God of Chesapeake. Amen. I want to just say hello to a few people. <clears throat> good morning to Aaron Borders. Amen. To Shauna Edwards, Brother Lloyd, Brother Marshall, Brother Brian, uh, Sister Cecilia. Amen. Um, Oh, and my, my cousin, amen, Gary Brinson, God bless you all this morning. It's a good thing to see you all here this morning. And um, I, tr I want to keep it fresh, as the world say. What do you mean? Just like this your first time here, because I really appreciate this. This really is a blessing. The enemy is trying to stick up his head a little bit, but God is blessing us and giving us some good workarounds. Um at this time we are going to um have a text amen for our devotion this morning amen concerning the building of god ah uh, that first scripture in peter okay let's turn to first peter and let us start at the first chapter okay I'm sorry let's start at the second chapter if you will while you're going to the second chapter let us go here Let us uh, look at the second, first Peter, second chapter, third verse. If so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. While we reading this devotional text, uh, you all put your prayer requests in. Ye also as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone, which the builders <clears throat> disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness, amen, into the marvelous light. All right. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. At this time, we just kind of want to check and just see who have... Uh, Put in prayer requests this this morning because we don't want to forget nobody amen so let us uh, kind of look at the chat line I know brother Brian Jameson he mentioned for us to continue to pray for sister Beth Stevens sister Beth Stevens let's not forget sister Beth Right. Okay. Let's remember, brother. Amen. Marshall and his back. 
can't see is there anyone else all right continue to remember us here in present in chesapeake also remember at the end of this month we'll be in chicago at a revival and i'll be the speaker so y'all pray for me as we Fellowship with the Saints, that's my home congregation in Chicago, Illinois, better known as 46 and Drexel. So pray for us um, that God will give get the glory. All right, then. Okay, if there's not any prayer requests, God knows the petitions that's on your heart. Let us have prayer. Heavenly, kind, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for all things. We thank you for what you do, Lord God. Amen. Thank you for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right mind. Amen. Giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength this morning. We have the very activities of our limbs and our bones this morning. We thank you for that. We ask, dear God, that you will continue to bless us and have your way in our life. Bless this broadcast of ourselves. We can do nothing, Lord God. We need your help. We need your strength. Help us, Lord, in teaching thy word, Lord God. Lord, continue to remember the <coughs> requests of your people. Remember Sister Beth Stevens this morning. We pray that you would bless her. Bless her in her mind, her body, and soul. Remember Brother Marshall in his back, Lord God. Just different one. You said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver us out of them all. Lord, I thank you for being a deliverer this morning. Thank you for blessing me in my body. So, Lord, continue to have your way. We're looking to you, Lord God. We know God can do anything but fail. So, Lord, we commit ourselves into your hands. May God bless you. All right, now we said we're going to start a little earlier today on the teaching, all right, because we want um, to kind of make up for yesterday. Uh, yesterday, let me see, can I find it here? Yesterday, we were having a little technical difficulty. Especially, I wanted to play the video of the walls of the sanctuary. Let's see if they'll play this morning. Okay. And let's see. Now, these walls are typical of the walls, amen, in Zion because the tabernacle well basically it's a structure um, and the furnishing and um, all those things speak of Jesus Christ and his body so we are the temple now we are the walls now we were just reading in first Peter about being living stones amen so the fact that we are the walls now, we're the temple of God. And so being the temple of God, this here is a type or a shadow of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and his body. So let's see. Let's see if we can uh, get it to play for the glory of God. There you go. Amen. The framework of the tabernacle will consist of frames made of acacia wood. Each frame must be 15 feet high and two and a quarter feet wide. There will be two pegs on each frame so they can be joined to the next frame. All the frames must be made this way. 20 of these frames will support the south side of the tabernacle. They will fit into 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame. On the north side, there will also be 20 of these frames, with their 40 silver bases, two bases for each frame. On the west side, there will be six frames, along with an extra frame at each corner. 
These corner frames will be connected at the bottom and firmly attached at the top with a single ring forming a single unit. Both of these corner frames will be made the same way. So there will be eight frames on that end of the tabernacle supported by 16 silver bases, two bases under each frame. Make crossbars of acacia wood to run across the frames. Five crossbars for the north side of the tabernacle and five for the south side. Also make five crossbars for the rear of the tabernacle which will face westward. The middle crossbar, halfway up the frames, will run all the way from one end of the tabernacle to the other. Overlay the frames with gold and make gold rings to support the crossbars. Overlay the crossbars with gold as well. Set up this tabernacle according to the design you were shown on the mountain. Wow, isn't that, that's awesome. Amen. So these walls are a temp, are well, a type of the sanctuary of God, all right? Now, let's look at a top view of inside this tabernacle as if you were on top of it, looking down inside. The room on the right is the holy place. The room on the left is the holies of holy. This is a model view of it. Some of these models you can even buy. All right, so here it is. These are the boards and the bars of the sanctuary. All right, and now the covering. This is what I want to show uh, you all yesterday, amen, about these coverings, how they is a beautiful type of the covering that Christ provides for us. Look here, the covering, um, It's let's read the commentary at the top. These two have special meaning and were specified in God, God's direction. Seal skin, rather it's translated to badger skin. It's more like a dolphin skin. These were dark and waterproof. The outside appeared unattractive. Uh, number two, ram skin, dyed red, pointed to the blood of Christ. White goat's hair, the righteousness of Christ. All right. Four, pure embroidered curtains, inward beauty, a blend of blue for the law, red, the sacrifice of Christ, and purple, the blending of justice and mercy in the gospel. All right. Let's look at this particular animation, and this will give us a better illustration. Make the tabernacle from ten sheets of fine linen. These sheets are to be decorated with blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, with figures of cherubim skillfully embroidered into them. Each sheet must be forty-two feet long and six feet wide. All ten sheets must be exactly the same size. Join five of these sheets together into one set. Then join the other five sheets into a second set. Put loops of blue yarn along the edge of the last sheet in each set. The 50 loops along the edge of one set are to match the 50 loops along the edge of the other. Then make 50 gold clasps to fasten the loops of the two sets of sheets together, making the tabernacle a single unit. Make heavy sheets of cloth from goat hair to cover the tabernacle. There must be 11 of these sheets, each 45 feet long and 6 feet wide. All eleven of these sheets must be exactly the same size. Join five of these together into one set and join the other six into a second set. The sixth sheet of the second set is to be doubled over at the entrance of the sacred tent. Put fifty loops along the edge of the last sheet in each set and fasten them together with fifty bronze clasps. In this way, the two sets will become a single unit. An extra half sheet of this roof covering will be left to hang over the back of the tabernacle, and the covering will hang down an extra 18 inches on each side. On top of these coverings, place a layer of tanned ram skins, and over them put a layer of fine goatskin leather. This will complete the roof covering. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? All right, uh that us I'm going to kind of change my view just a little bit 
so I can come in and out among the commentary. There you go. Okay. So as we were explaining to you, uh, we were showing you an animated view of the outer coverings. Okay. These are close-up views here. All right. I want to show you. Let's see. As we go inside of it, bear with me just a little bit as we get set up. Today, we're going to be teaching a little bit on the candlestick, okay? All right, let us go to the candlestick. Here we go. I'm going to show you this animated view first. Make a lampstand of pure hammered gold. The entire lampstand and its decorations will be one piece. The base, center stem, lamp cups, buds and blossoms. It will have six branches, three branches going out from each side of the center stem. Each of the six branches will hold a cup shaped like an almond blossom, complete with buds and petals. The center stem of the lampstand will be decorated with four almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. One blossom will be set beneath each pair of branches where they extend from the center stem. The decorations and branches must all be one piece with the stem and they must be hammered from pure gold. Amen. Then make the seven lamps for the lampstand yes. and set them so they reflect their light forward. The lamp snuffers and trays must also be made of pure gold. You will need 75 pounds of pure gold for the lampstand and its accessories. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. Thank God. It's a blessing that we could go back and do a recap on those um, particular items. I really wanted you to see that. So we are focusing today on the lampstands. And my question to you, in your mind, what do you think the lampstands represent? What do you think the lampstand represent? Right. Let me just things kind of want to hop around this morning, but that's all right. There you go. What do you think these seven lamps that is continually burning before God, what do they represent? I know this commentary, amen, says God's promise to his children that they need never walk in darkness. All right, but we want to dive in it just a little more. The lampstand, first of all, was made of solid, pure gold. It was beaten out of a single piece of gold. They had one piece that they literally carved and beat out this uh, lampstand. They didn't make it in pieces and then bring it together. It was placed towards the left side of the holy place. The south side, amen, uh, on that, rather on the south side, Exodus does not give us either the dimension or the pattern of the lampstand. And we do know it had branches and that the bowls were to be formed like almonds in blossom. The lampstand was therefore like a tree of gold, just like a tree had branches. This lampstand had branches. In him was life, and life was the light of man. The purpose of it was to give light. This lampstand is a beautiful type of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This lampstand represents also 
the tree of life. Christ now is our tree of life, for in him we have eternal life. I would say that of all the furnishings, this piece is an extraordinary piece of furniture because it was carved out of one chunk of gold. It was not pieced together, as I said earlier. It was not put together in section. It was carved out of one piece of gold. It had a central shaft, which you can see here, all right? Just like the trunk of a tree. It had six branches, just like a tree had branches. The central trunk provided the seven branches, making it a seven-branch lampstand. Each branch had knobs, flowers, and almond-shaped bowls, which held pure olive oil. It took, rather, it looked like an almond tree uh, containing buds, blossoming flowers. As stated earlier in the Bible, amen, it does not give any measurements regarding this piece of furniture. In many of the studies on this tabernacle, I believe less attention has been paid to this particular piece of furniture other than stating that it gives light, all right? Because many have looked upon it as a piece of house furniture that gives light in a room. It was, but I want you to know it's more than that. This piece of furniture is a type or representation of Jesus Christ. It shows our Lord as the tree of light. It did give light to the holy place. Without it, the priest would have to do, amen, their ministering in darkness. It gave light to the outer pieces of furniture in the room, such as the table of showbread and the golden altar of incense. This light was to burn continually. You'll find that in Leviticus 20. Four, amen, verses 1, 2, 3. And in Christ being that light, and that light in us, we as the saints of God should burn continuously. We should consistently show the light of Christ. We should never let this light go out. Now, this light was not to go out so that it would always be a light in a holy place. To further my description that this lamp represents the tree of life, let us turn to Zechariah the prophet. All right, let's go to the fourth chapter, if you will. This is a beautiful uh, analogy also found in Zechariah, the fourth chapter. Let's fingers do the walking this morning. All right, listen to this. I better get my glasses out for this one. Amen. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that waketh out of his sleep and said to me, What does thou? I'm sorry. And said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked. And behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and, the t and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side of the bowl. So I answered and spake to the angel, that talk with me saying what are these my lord amen so here it is the prophet Zechariah he wanted the angel to reveal to him what are these in other words what does these things mean now we have told you in the scripture these things were put here as an example as a shadow as a type to encourage us not only that but to bring fear upon us in the uh in in the respect that we would honor God, amen, and not just trifle with these things, amen, because these were holy things which represented a holy people, all right? So he said, the angel talked it with me uh, in the fifth verse, 
and answered and said to me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And I know many times we have questions in our heart. What are these things? What do these symbols mean? Now, in studying the book of Revelation, you will find that the book of Revelation used a lot of imagery from the Old Testament. We were able to see that clearly in our study. And just to show you, for example, um, here, let us go to Revelation, the first chapter. And this will teach you the importance of why we should go back, amen, and learn these symbols. What did it mean to the children of Israel? Amen. What does it mean to us today? When we're dealing with types and shadow, in order for you to understand the fulfillment of the type, you need to know what the, uh, the, uh, the type is about, the shadow, all right? The Bible said that the law, and that's speaking of these types and shadow, uh, the law was a shadow of good things, amen, and they led to Christ. So here it is. Um, it's so important. If you turn to Revelation, let's go to the first chapter, for example. here 12th verse and I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to his foot so here it is this is a beautiful picture of um, of this lamp stand or this this candlestick stand and they represented the seven churches how do you know 20th verse in the same chapter the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches who gives us this interpretation? Jesus himself. He wants us to understand it. Go back to the first uh, chapter and let's look. Uh, I'm talking about the first chapter of Revelation. And let us look at, let's see here. Let us look at the third uh, uh, verse. Blessed is he that readeth. Come on. God wants us to read and study these things. The Bible said, a scribe well instructed unto the kingdom will go into his treasure and bring things out new and old. What is the treasure? The word of God, the truth of God's word. What do you mean bring things out of new and old? The Old Testament and the New Testament. The Bible says, study to show thyself approve, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. We need to understand the difference between the law and the gospel. Then here in Revelation, he encouraged us. He, first of all, the Bible said that, um, where's that scripture at? That all scripture is given by inspiration. The Bible says no prophecy of the scripture, amen, is of any in private interpretation. Amen. Um, uh, it didn't come in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God who spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Spirit of God wants us to understand that, all right? Uh, if you want a deeper blessing and a deeper blessing in your experience, start digging in the Word. I can remember many times in studying these types, these shadows, these symbols in the book of Revelation, there was so much I didn't understand. And even some of it, it was a little hard for my mind to wrap itself around. But I said, Lord, amen, you help me. If, I, if I'm not quite sure what it means, but Lord, open my heart. Amen, help me, amen, to understand this with my heart. Lord, speak to my heart. And that's just what he did. Amen, he opened it up. He revealed it to me. So Jesus is saying here, uh, in this, through the scriptures, he said, blessed is he that readeth. So we're the read it. We're to read about these things. These were examples. These were types. These were shadows. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy 
and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So it's a blessing if you read it, it's a blessing if you hear it, and it's a blessing if you keep those things. Why? In studying these things, and you get them under your belt, when you come to the book of Revelation, you can understand it because it used a lot of Old Testament imagery. Give you for example, let's go to the 15th chapter. And I'm trying to bring out scripture in reference to the lesson that is being taught here. So if you look at Revelation, the 15th chapter, and speaking uh, in reference to what we're teaching on the tabernacle, listen to this. Revelation 15 and 1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them, listen to this, is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass. All right? So the sea of glass has a reference to the Old Testament temple. But listen to this here. Go down to the 8th verse. And the temple was filled with smoke. Was not, amen, the tabernacle filled with smoke of God's glory? Amen, the temple at likewise. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able, uh, listen, to enter the temple till the seven plagues or the seven angels uh, were fulfilled. I think it's another scripture I'm trying to find is it says the temple, the temple of the tabernacle in heaven was open. I tell you what, let us go to the ninth chapter. It might be among or the eleventh chapter, I should say, that when the seven angels sounded, what happened here? What happened when the seven angels sounded? Let's see. All right. 11:19 And the temple of God was open in heaven. It ain't talking about the heaven where God is at. This is talking about the heaven in the realm where the church reside because we was raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places. And there was seen in his temple look the ark of the testament Amen. A lot of people, they even made movies talking about the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I can tell you where the ark is. Amen. The ark have, was found a long time ago. It was found on the day of Pentecost. Amen. The ark or the glory of God is in his church. And the temple of God was open in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were, amen, lightnings voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So here it is, we could see that in the teaching, even in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it uses Old Testament imagery. Now let us go back to Zechariah, the fourth chapter. Amen. Uh, and, and, and let Zechariah speak to us to refresh us in what they're trying to bring out here. So, I'll go back to the fourth verse. Zechariah asked the angel. So I answered and spake to the angel that I talked with, that talked with me, rather, saying, what are these, my Lord? What does these mean? In other words, do we say that sometimes? Do we ask the Lord, what does these things mean? Lord, I really want to know about this. You know, it's so important not to just read on the surface. All right, make me think of another scripture. You can, I'll read it to you. Amen. Isaiah, the 28th chapter. Listen to what it says to us. Isaiah, the 28th chapter. And 11th verse. Oh, I think that is it. Just bear with me a little bit. 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Prophecy is a doctrine. Amen. It's a teaching. Amen. And it says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. There'll come a time you got to wean yourself 
Amen. Off the milk. The Bible says newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So as a babe in Christ, yes, you do desire the milk. There comes a time you must wean yourself from the milk so you can grow. All babies at some point of phase in their life, when they become toddlers, they start eating meat. Amen. Some people, they're in the same place where they always was. Paul said uh, he couldn't feed them with meat, meat because they wasn't ready for it. There are some people ain't ready for this. And you know the reason why? Because they still in the same place. See, we're not just to read the uh, scripture. We are to experience the scriptures. He said, blessed is he that readeth, they that hear the words of this property and keep. See, here's where the experience come in because you have to put in action, you have to apply what you have read. Even in the book of Revelation, amen, we read through a, a message one day, come out of her, my people, come out of Babylon, amen. Come, amen, to where the ark is, where the temple of the testimony of the tabernacle, which was a testimony of the glory of God, amen. Come to Zion. Come to the holy hill, amen. Come to the saints. So it's so important that we, amen, get it right. So we have to study this. And I'm trying to kind of just encourage you by laying this simple format it isn't hard saints we can do this saints amen so some of it is tedious amen listen to this in isaiah it says whom shall he teach knowledge whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breath for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. I've often said this, the book of Revelation, the 66th book of the Bible contains the other 65. Do you think back in the day they had commentaries, concordians, and all of that? No, people read their Bibles. Amen. And they could understand this not because they had a Bible bookstore over in the mall or down the street. The Holy Spirit took them on the journey throughout the Word. You didn't have to go to college to get this. Theology can't teach this. You need some neology, amen, to be down on your knee. My pastor often says schools make doctors, lawyers, and teachers, but it takes God to make a preacher. Amen. It takes it takes God to help us understand these things. But it's not only for the preacher to understand that the average saints, because we are kings and we are priests of the Lord. Even then, when it says it, it's using Old Testament imagery. So here it is in Zechariah again. As we look upon this, we go back here. Um, so I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest now that you don't know what these things be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered, Listen to this answer. And then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Amen. This was a representation of the Holy Spirit. All right. Who art thou, O great mountain? Now listen to this right here. Well, the candlesticks represented the church. But amen. In order for the church light to burn, it had to have the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit or the oil that kept the oil in the lamp. Now listen to this right here in the um, 11th verse. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these olive trees upon the right side and the candlestick upon the left side? And I answered and said again, 
and said, I answer again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches? What does this mean? Which through the golden pipes, listen to this, empty the golden oil. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The golden pipes and the golden oil. The holy church of Jesus Christ is so connected to the Holy Ghost, amen, amen, that it is able to illuminate us and make us a light of the world. And what keeps that lamp, those lamps burning is the Holy Ghost, the fire of God. You remember the 10 virgin, amen. All of them had lamps, but some people lamps went out, why? They, they were disconnected from the olive trees. Hello. Yes, they were. They were disconnected from the olive trees. The word and the spirit. And that's how it is today. Many are disconnected. Amen. Many are not only disconnected from prayer, they're disconnected from Bible study. Amen. They're going through a form. They got a good form of God. They know the lingo, Lord bless you, and all of that. But how is your prayer life? Amen. How is your study life? Amen. That's one thing, and I, I, give, I give God the glory. That I didn't have a, a education, a really good education in school. I was... Uh, to a certain degree, illiterate. But what was a blessing to me, see, I lost my mom when I was 13, lost my dad when I was 15, plus I was a very sickly and weak and feeble child that, my, that stayed sick all the time with asthma and this thing and that thing. But how when I was, after I had gotten saved, God blessed me, Send me back to school. I got an education. That was after salvation now. And God opened up my understanding. The first real book that I ever read was the Holy Scriptures. And once that opened up to me, I thought, and I still think today, it is the greatest book, amen, that ever been written. And I love that book. They used to laugh at me. Because everywhere I went, I took the Bible. I went to the grocery store, to the cleaners. I took my Bible. And do you know, I still kind of do that today because I don't know. I know in the city of Chicago, I might have to do battle with a Jehovah Witness. I might have to do battle with a seven-day Adventist or some dispensationalist, and I'm going to be ready. Amen. Because I've learned through my pastor and the teaching of God's Word to stay hid by, behind the Word. How you going to do that if you don't know the word? The Bible said when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Amen. Well, what are you going to lift up if it ain't nothing there? It's not by our might nor by our power, but it's by his spirit. Knowing this first that no prophecy, amen, is of any private interpretation. We can't interpret this of ourselves. But number one, the criteria, you must be a holy man of God who spake by the Holy Ghost, who's motivated by the Holy Ghost, who's inspired by the Holy Ghost, who studies by the Holy Ghost, who prays by the Holy Ghost. That's, and so how do you do? As being that candlestick, guess what? I stay plugged in. I stay connected. Are you connected this morning? Come on. This is what devotion, prayer, and Bible study is about. To help us stay connected. And I believe many of you are this morning. Because you get up. You make a sacrifice. You, you, you come here early in the morning. And I thank God for it. So we're going to continue tomorrow. Thank God. Amen. I mean, I've had a little problems getting amen this going but you know what I am so encouraged because I know that God amen 
its blessing and it's going to have its way. So at this time, I know it's time to kind of sign off. I hate to for us to go, but I got to go to work. You got to go to work likewise. All right. Let me set things up a little bit. Okay. You got to go to work likewise, and guess what? We can meet tomorrow morning. You know, we used to sing that song, I'll meet you in the morning by the bright riverside. Well, maybe not that morning, but by the grace of God, if it be the Lord's will, we can meet tomorrow morning. May God bless you. Amen. Study his word. Amen. God bless you.